other day I got a comment. Uh, someone was asking me a question about how I built the regulation jig for my double rifle. So what I did was I used some angle iron and some bolts for front and back in the sides as well. And this is the front right here. This is the back. This is the notch right here where it locks in. All right, with this, so I took some angle iron. It's three quarter inch by three quarter inch. And I basically figured out how wide the barrels were. And I ended up tapping and drilling, or drilling and tapping, sorry, for the width of the barrels, like how, how far apart they were. And then you needed the centers on both sides and then the tops. This middle one right here is so that the rib stays in place. And screw that in or out and the front sight what I normally do is I just wire wrap the sight down so it doesn't come out of place and then depending on how your barrel needs to be adjusted you either move tighten one up and then either tighten the bottom up or um, loosen the top and then bring the barrel up or you can bring it in by adjusting these you can use Allen head bolts. It depends on what you want to um, thread it, what size thread pitch. Um, Allen bolts work a lot better. Um, I use these because these are what I had lying around. So the back of the gun, or the back of the jig looks like this. This is the notch for where it locks into the actual gun. Same thing. You want it to sit on the flat. So that's why I have this notch here. This is flat all the way across, and it's going to be, it's going to, be more accurate that way when it's on the flat of the barrel. Now, someone a while back said I basically ruined the gun. I did not ruin the gun. I could not get the thing to shoot. I shot 20 different types of ammo, factory loads. And yes, I know double rifles are load specific. My gun is loaded for 350 grain, um, flat nose, soft points. They're 350 grain with 43 grains of IMR 4198 powder. And that's what my gun likes. That's what it shoots. So these right here, basically, if you get your flat, get the back of the barrel, the flats on here, you can back these out and then just tighten these down so it doesn't move. Tighten it up on the sides. Get that set. Then when you heat the, the barrel up, you want to have the barrel wrapped in wire as well. And then you want to have the ribs wedged um, so that they don't come out when you're heating. You have those wedged, and then you can adjust the barrels here. But after you heat the barrels, you want to tip it upside down so that the solder doesn't ball up. And then what will happen is you'll hear it rolling around inside the barrels or inside the channel between the barrels, and you don't want that. So that's, that's how I did it. I created ribs for my gun, um, and then I ended up creating a wedge. And... Putting it all together and it worked great. Now these are all held together right here with just screws. I tapped this middle one or the back one right here. I tapped that, then tighten these up, and then I basically I just soldered them. These will not move. And if you want, you can always have someone weld. If you have a welder at home, you could weld one of these together. I don't have a welder. I just have I can either braze or solder, and that's what I did, and it works great. So um, yeah, that's the. That's the regulation jig in a nutshell. When I, in one of my previous videos, a couple years ago I did, I only put it to about here, but I talked to Stuart Richards, the gentleman at Wesley Richards, um, who regulates all their double rifles, and he recommended going the full length to the flats of the barrels, and that's what I did here. That's the, the jig itself. So, yeah, it, it's, it was a project to make this, but it works, and uh, I can't be happier with it. So there you have it. There's a regulation jig that I built for the uh, 4570 double rifle. Uh, works for me. I love it. You know, it wasn't hard to make. It was simple and cheap. The bolts, I think, with the angle iron, I think I bought three pieces of three pieces of angle iron, which ran me. I think it was like 20 bucks, and then the bolts were. I want to say like 10 bucks for the bolts. And then the screws that hold the square bracket together, I had lying around. Um, but like I said, if you're a welder, you can weld that all together. Then you don't have to have the worries of 
capping the ends. And you could probably even do it out of like square stock. Like um, you could get like square tube or square stock that you could get and do it that way. I did the angle iron because it was tough. It was really strong and durable. So again, thanks for watching and uh, hope you guys enjoyed this video and we'll see you on the next one.